Did you know that a single line of code could let you break into a website's database and access sensitive information? That's the power of SQL injection. But instead of getting into trouble, you can get paid for finding these vulnerabilities. In this video, I will show you a little bit of how SQL injection works and how you can turn it into a money-making skill. So, let's get to it. So, what's SQL first of all? SQL stands for Structured Query Language and it's a programming language used for managing and interacting with relational databases. These databases store information in tables that are made up of rows and columns, similar to how data is organized in a spreadsheet. So, for example, imagine that you have an online store where you sell food. In order for your customers to search for a product and check its price, you store the product's names, IDs and prices in a database. This database might have a table called Products, which will have, for instance, the product ID, the name of the product and the price. You can also have more than one table. In this example, you could have another table for the customers, which contains the customer's unique ID, as you can see here, and their name. Additionally, you could have a third table that records the orders placed by customers, which links the customer to the product they bought. So, for example, you have here one order placed by our customer number 2, that in this case is our Mary. The product that Mary bought was bananas, as you can see, she bought 5 bananas and this order has the ID of one. Now, because the data in the customer's table and in the product's table and in the order's table are related, this kind of database is called a relational database because you can define relationships between data stored in different tables. As you can see, in this diagram, the product ID in the order's table relates to the product ID in the product's table. It is therefore a relationship between the two tables, meaning that every product ID in the table order must relate to a product in the table product. This is also the case for the customer ID, where the customer ID in the order's table relates to the customer ID in the customer's table. Now, as you know, when we go to a store online, we don't see these uh, tables that store the product's ID, the customer's ID, etc. We just simply search for a product and maybe buy that product. However, there is more to it than this. When a client searches for a product, a SQL query is made. So, for example, imagine that a client searches for a product like apples, like this one. A query is made and it will search the products table for the products whose name matches apples. And the query will be like this one, as you can see here in the right side. So, this query will search the products table, as you can see, here it says product, for a product with the name apples, as you can see, and returns its ID, the name and its price. And as you can see, uh, our query, this query here, returns our product ID, the name of the product and the price. And this is what happens every time that you search for an item. Ok, now that you know what happens behind the scenes of a website, you are ready to know about SQL injection. So, what is SQL injection? So, SQL injection is a web security vulnerability that allows an attacker to inject malicious SQL code into a web application's database query. This occurs when the application doesn't properly sanitize or validate user inputs. By injecting malicious SQL code, an attacker can manipulate the database query to bypass security measures, to access sensitive data, to modify or delete records or even take control of the entire database. Now let's see if this website is well sanitized or not. To do that, we can begin by insert the following payload. This payload that we will insert is one of the most known payloads in SQL injection. So, 
one equals to one. Now, by inserting this malicious SQL code, we will see if this website has the user input well sanitized or not. So let's search for this. Okay, as you can see, this website isn't well sanitized because it lists the contents of the table products. Now, this shouldn't be happening because we shouldn't receive a list of all the products that exist in the product table. Now, if this website was well sanitized, you should see something like product not found. And this is because the SQL code that we have inserted in the website will be treated as if it was a name, not a SQL command. So, as you can see, just by using this malicious SQL code, a black hat hacker could damage a company in a lot of ways, making this company lose its credibility, a lot of money, just what happened with a heartland payment systems company. Now, it's important to understand why does this kind of payload work. So when we insert this uh, malicious SQL code in the search field, the SQL query will be like this one here. So this query here will search for a product with an empty name because inside of these single quotes should be a name like uh, this one here. But because we didn't insert a name, then it will uh, default as an empty name, which doesn't usually happen to exist. Then it moves to the second part of the payload, that is 1 equals to 1. And because 1 equals to 1 is always true, the database no longer cares if the product's name is correct and it will return all the products that exist in the database, as you saw previously. So. Here. Now, of course, that this isn't all. There are a lot of kinds of SQL injection, like in-band SQL injection, blind SQL injection, out-of-band SQL injection, etc. And you can learn about this on Port Swigger Academy. They teach SQL injection very well and have exercises so you can apply what you learn. And you can always train your SQL injection skills on BWeb. Also, you can see how to install it in this video here and I also show some code debug so your BWAP can work in the way it's supposed to. You also have resources like SQL Injection Cheat Sheet where you can find commands that you can use and information about those commands. Now, did you know that you can earn money with these vulnerabilities? And don't worry, because you don't need to make any job interviews. You just need to know, in this case, about SQL injection. Now, if you know about SQL injection and you want to make money with your knowledge, then you can participate in bug bounty hunting programs. Now, for those who don't know, a bug bounty program is a program where you can search for vulnerabilities for companies like Google and in return they give you a reward. The amount of money that you can earn will depend on the severity of the vulnerability that you find. So you have low severity, you have medium, you have high and you have critical. According with this site, this is what companies pay on average, as you can see here. Now be aware that sometimes you won't gain any money if the vulnerability was already found or if you didn't write a good report. And yes, every time that you find a bug, you need to make a report stating your findings and the path that you took to uh, get there. But that's it. It's perfect for those who want to find real vulnerabilities and earn money. Now you ask, okay, but where can I find those bug bounty programs? Well, accordingly with this site, these are the world's largest bug bounty platforms, as you can see here. So we have HackerOne, we have bug crowds, integrity, and yes, we hack. Now that you know a little bit more about SQL injection and that it can lead to big problems and profitable bug rewards, you must see this video on how to become a full-blown ethical hacker to find more bugs and earn more money. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. And if you have any questions or video suggestions, please leave those in the commentary section down below. See you next time, stay curious, stay safe and happy learning!
拜。